Good morning, Harvest Church. Thank you for joining us Sunday. Go ahead and get up off your feet if you want. Let's clap your hands here. We're gonna raise a hallelujah in this place this morning. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah.
In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated And the King is alive Hallelujah 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 Let's raise a hallelujah Oh, church friends and family, wherever you're at, let's lift up a hallelujah to him. Let's sing out a praise to him this morning. He is worthy. He's worthy of our praise. Oh, I just want to welcome you. And thank you for welcoming us into your home. It's just a delight always to come together this way now on Sundays. It's not the same as being together, but we're so glad to be together this way. And I just invite you and encourage you right now, all over, all over this city, wherever you're at, Phoenix, Peoria, Glendale, Avondale, Tolleson, Sun City, Sun City West, Goodyear, Litchfield Park, Buckeye, out there in Verona up there in Anthem. Why don't you raise a hallelujah? Why don't you determine that nothing's going to steal your praise today? That no matter what the storm is, no matter what the size of the enemy, whatever it looks like out there, will you just raise up a praise and a hallelujah today? Because he's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, we're excited about, about our service this morning. We're excited. We're, we're believing God to touch your life, to touch those in your home right now. We just, we wish we could be right there with you and or we wish you could be right here with us, but we're together in the spirit. So let's just continue to worship the Lord. Let's continue to celebrate the King who is alive, to celebrate the victory that is ours in Jesus this morning. Let's worship him. Holy Spirit, come settle in. Oh, we press into you, God. We press into you, God. We want to see you, God. Teach you guys a new course. It talks about how God fights for you. He's on your side. He is able to do all things. And we are here to lift his name high. So I just ask right now on this Sunday morning, wherever you're at, we'd set aside distractions we set aside hindrances that would distract us from the presence of God. And we focus in on you. And you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, we sing. And you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance, the exodus of my heart. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my release. Oh, Yahweh. We sing, you're the God. You're the God who fights for me. You're the every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you have torn apart the sea. You have led me.
cloud by day is a sign that you are with me. The fire by night is a guiding light to my feet. Oh, you found me, you freed me, held back the waters. We sing it again. You found me, you freed me, held back the waters for my relief. into my Egypt and you took me by the hand you marched me into freedom or oh, into the promised land now I will not forget you God I sing of all you've done death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love cause you stepped into my Egypt and you took me by the hand, oh, you marched me out in freedom into the promised land, yeah. Now I will not forget you, God, I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love.
speak the name of Jesus. Yeah, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is a peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is power Your name is healing
Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Come on, one more time. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind. Cause I know that there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Oh yes, God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Over every heart, over every mind, every person, every man, every woman, every child, every family, every marriage. Oh, I speak the name of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus. Oh, every, over every sickness. I speak the name of Jesus over every fear. I speak the name of Jesus over every spirit of darkness. I speak the name of Jesus over depression and anxiety. I speak the name of Jesus over addiction. I speak the power of the name of Jesus to heal, deliver, restore. I speak the holy name of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus. While our team was worshiping here, while you were worshiping at home, I've been walking this sanctuary and I've been laying hands on every single seat because I know that you sit there. I can see you. I know where you sit. And I lay my hands and I say, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, touch this one. And in the name of Jesus, change the heart of this one. In the name of Jesus, meet the need of this one. There's power in his name, friends. That's the name that we worship. That's the name that we speak. That's the name that we believe in. That's the name that we declare. That's the name we lift high. That's the name we praise, the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we declare your name, your name over our country and our nation, your name over our church, your name, God, over every person. The mighty name of Jesus. We have no answers, but we speak the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Friends, take that name with you. Take that name into your spirit. Take that name. All authority has been given to you in the name of Jesus. Oh, we just pray that the Lord continues to show himself strong on your behalf in these days. We're so grateful. We're so grateful for our ministry team during this time. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for coming and, and for just entering and ushering us into the presence of the Lord. We're so, we're so grateful. We love you, church. Pastor and I love you. Of course, in just a moment, he's coming to, to preach a powerful message on the peace of God. But before that, we want to show you some great updates from David and, and Pastor Miguel and for past, from Pastor Tim and Kari as well. So enjoy these updates and uh, we will, we will uh, stay close and stay connected always. Thank you. Good morning, Harvest family. Commander David of KidVenture Academy here. And wow, do we ever miss hanging out with your kids on Sunday mornings. We hope you're taking advantage of all the content we're putting on our Facebook page, as well as our Instagram page for you and your children to enjoy. Also, KidVenture Academy is putting together each week resources for you and your children to enjoy God's Word together at home and to grow in God together. So if you would like to receive our weekly at-home resources, simply email us at this address right here and we will get you each week our at-home resources. God bless you guys. Let's enjoy the rest of today's service together. Bye.
Good morning, church fam. I hope you're doing well. I just want to give a special shout out to our crew, youth, and young adults. We miss you guys so very much, and we can't wait to see you. But we're very grateful for the ability to be able to live stream our youth services every single Wednesday. And I want to tell you that we can feel the love that you're putting out. We just jumped right into the boat, and we're hearing all sorts of amazing stories of how God has been working through you during this quarantine season. If you're not already watching or following us on Facebook and Instagram, I encourage you to do so at The Crew PHX. I want to invite you personally for our online series finale this Wednesday. Come see what all the hype is about. But remember, it's not just a hype. It's a new era. Good morning. Thank you once again for being with us and allowing us into your home. Yes. However you are viewing us through the internet, we are so grateful that you continue to uh, share and be part of the family of Harvest Church. Yes, we miss you guys so much. And as Pastor Ron and Sue have said over and over, we cannot wait till we meet together again and we can actually be together as a congregation, as a family. We miss you guys so much. Um, I wanted to share a little story with you that my mom told me the other day about um, a friend of hers. She had her grandson over and her grandson's about four years old and he was visiting with his mom there and they were kind of playing. And before he left, he said, Nana, can I have some candy? So she gave him candy, because what Nana wouldn't do that, right? So she gave him candy, but mom says, you can't eat that until you eat your lunch. And he's like, but I want my candy. She's like, well, let's go get in the car. So he got in the car, got all buckled up. Okay, mom, I want my candy now. She's like, no, you have to eat your lunch first. But I want my candy. She said, no, I said you need to eat your lunch first. But mom, I want my candy right now. She said, you have to wait until you eat your lunch. He was quiet for a few seconds, just kind of pondering what she said. And then he replies kind of in a discouraged and down voice. And he says, but that wasn't my plan. How many of us feel that way about this COVID-19 pandemic? It's not our plan. Our jobs got interrupted, school's interrupted, life is interrupted. It's kind of crazy how it goes, but we can rest in the fact knowing that our Heavenly Father is leading and guiding us and He knows what we need and He will provide everything that we need. And even though it's not our plan, we can rest in that. Amen? Amen. God is an awesome God. Yes, He is. Just wanted to remind you once again how you can continue to honor the Lord with your tithe and offering. Yeah. Uh, you can do that electronically through our website, hcaz.org. You can do it through the app that you can download uh, onto your phone. You can also do it at the church by either stopping in with your offering or even coming in to use the kiosk. And you also can text us. That information is on your screen. Mm -hmm. Again, we're so glad that you guys are with us yes, and we cannot you. wait to see you face to face yes, again. That's right. It's getting closer. Yes. We're going to get, get back together again. Yes. So God bless you and thank you again for being with us. Now let's hear what Pastor has for us today. Good morning, church family. I trust you and your family are remaining safe and healthy during this time of social distancing and pandemic outbreak. You know, staying at home isn't an easy thing to do. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait for the day that we can open up the church and we can be together. I'm so grateful for our online ministry, especially those that are working behind the scenes every week to place this into your homes, but I don't believe that there's anything that comes close to gathering together in his house, worshiping the Lord, and experiencing his presence. 
Oh, we're going to continue to pray and believe God for his timing in opening the country and especially our places of worship. Now, if you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, and let's begin reading together with verse 28. Chapter 24 and verse 28. It says, As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. They all asked each other. Uh, Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us when he talked with us on the road, and he opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those that were with them assembled together, saying, it is is true. The Lord has risen. He's appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be unto you. Father, we ask you, to bless and anoint your word today. Encourage our hearts that you are in control, you are sovereign, and that you are going to bring all things together according to your perfect plan and purpose. Lord, today we continue to pray for our president, our vice president, the task force. We pray for our health care workers, first responders, those that are on the front lines. We pray for those that have been affected by this virus. We continue to pray for our World Missions Director, Greg Mundus, that you would touch and heal him and raise him up off of that bed. Lord, we pray for those that continue to battle cancer. We pray for Sean and Miguel and JR that God, you would do a miracle in their lives. And finally, Lord, I just pray for all those that are are facing unemployment and financial hardships. I ask you, God, to surround them with your grace, your mercy, and your peace. Comfort them, God. Strengthen them, Lord. Show yourself true and faithful to them. And we pray this all in the wonderful name of Jesus. And everyone would say, amen. Amen. Now, last week, we celebrated the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And after his resurrection, we know that he spent a considerable amount of time visiting with his disciples, talking with them, and also sharing in meals together. Now, before Jesus had ascended unto the Father, he had met two individuals on the road to Emmaus. After talking with Jesus, they immediately went back to Jerusalem to announce that Jesus had risen indeed. Their experience had taken them from defeat and depression and had given them immediate hope and encouragement. And it is from this backdrop that I like to speak to your hearts today. Our golden text is taken from Luke's gospel, chapter 24 and verse 36. It says, now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. And he said, peace be unto you. I cannot think of better words than these from the lips of of our Savior, especially in the light of everything that's been going on in the world today. 
Finding God's peace in the midst of storms is not always an easy thing to do. And yet, if we're willing to listen to the voice of God, we can possess peace in every situation that we face in this life. In our Bible text, the disciples had much to be in turmoil over. They had lost their friend through the terrible crucifixion. They had heard reports that his body had been stolen from the tomb. And there were these enthusiastic women running around saying, we have seen the Lord. Then all of a sudden, poof, in walks Jesus right into the room where they're eating. I mean, you talk about freaking out. As a matter of fact, it says the disciples were startled and frightened, thinking that it was a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise up in your minds? Look at my hands and feet. It is I, myself, touch and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Wow. Jesus, is that really you? Are you alive? And then it says that Jesus showed him his hands and feet. And while they still not, did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked him, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Wow. You know, you can always tell the real identity of someone by the way he or she eats. It's true. Each of us have different characteristics in the way we eat. My family tells me that I eat extremely fast and that I smack my lips together when I eat. Of course, I don't believe them, but it's probably true. Oh, and you ought to see the way Kyle and Nate eat. Whoa, Katie, bar the door. I was so pleased to see a, a, a Facebook text this week from Kay Crow, and she put this post on. She said, man, I tell you, when the social distancing thing is all over and it's lifted, I'm going to go to a Mexican restaurant and I'm going to have 10 bowls of chips and salsa. And then she says, and don't judge me. <laughs> it is amazing how you can prove someone's identity simply by the way they eat. Jesus proved his identity in front of his disciples by eating a piece of fish. And then he tells them these four beautiful words, peace be unto you after they had gone through all the experiences of the last week, these words by far are the most wonderful words they could have ever heard. You see, they not only saw the hands and feet of Jesus and watched as he ate fish, but there were also many times as they journeyed together that they heard the words peace. Oh, there was the time that they were in the boat in the middle of a terrible storm and Jesus was asleep at the rear of the boat and they went and woke him up and said, Master, don't you care if we drown? And what were the words of Jesus in that storm? He arose and he rebuked the wind and he said, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great Calm. Wow. Friend, in the midst of our storms, Jesus always comes to say, Peace be still. Another time, he said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. 
Jesus knew at that moment he needed to speak the words of peace to dispel the fear from the disciples' hearts. And might I say this morning that each of us today needs to hear the great words of our shepherd saying, peace be unto you. I know that I need to hear those words often as I try to navigate all that's going on in the world today. Thinking about God's peace this week reminded me of an experience that Sue and I had a few years back when we decided to go to Bartlett Lake to have a picnic. Oh, it was a quiet, peaceful day sitting there on the shores and having our lunch together. And then Sue said to me, why don't we go on a little hike over there? And uh, I said, okay, let's do it. So as we were walking and hiking, I heard this strange noise that sounded like like bumblebees. And, and this was odd because we didn't see any bees, so we just kept walking. About 10 minutes later into the hike, I veered off to the right and Sue went to the left. And as I came up over a little hill, just 12 inches from me was a five foot rattlesnake coiled up and ready to strike. It was a massive diamondback. So what did I do? I screamed like a little girl and I ran out of there shouting, rattlesnake, rattlesnake. You talk about losing your peace. <laughs> talk about freaking out, total panic. Of course, I, I should have known better considering the place where we were picnicking, picnicking was called Rattlesnake Cove. And what's even more hilarious is right before we started out on our hike, Sue said, there's probably rattlesnakes all over this place. Well, she was right. You know, it's easy to have peace when everything is calm and going right. But when things are going wrong, it's difficult to find peace. When the snakes of fear, stress, and anxiety are coiled up at our feet, then peace eludes us rapidly. And I have learned over the years that a lack of peace is usually the result of our complex, accelerated, and stressed out world. And most people are disconnected from peace on a daily basis due to one of three reasons, which I call peace disconnections. Let me give them to you. The first one is sin. That's loss of peace with God. People who are living lives of sin cannot have the inner peace of God. It's just not possible. Jesus is our peace, and the only way we can have peace is to be in a relationship with him. Dear hearts, don't let sin keep you from enjoying the peace of God. What we need to do is we need to repent, confess our sins, and come back into a relationship with Jesus. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank God for his forgiveness. Another thing that we can disconnect us from peace in our lives is this, stress. That, that really means loss of peace with self. Anyone have stress lately? <laughs> of course, we all do. There's so many times in these past six weeks, so many unknowns right now, it almost makes it impossible to plan for the future, let alone next week. Thinking about this reminds me of a story of two young boys who saw their mom under a lot of stress and they decided to, to help her out by purchasing a, a, a house plant or some flowers. And so they went to the flower shop and, and they used their own money and uh, 
they wanted to surprise her, so they brought it home. And the other, the, the, the older one said to his mom, she said, well, there was a banquet or a bouquet of flowers at the shop, but it was too expensive. So we decided to buy the one that had the ribbon on it that said, rest in peace. We thought it would be just perfect since you're always asking for a little peace and quiet. <laughs> Mother's Day is coming. What a perfect gift for mom. <laughs> you know as well as I do, stress wears you out and it steals your inner joy. It's like the lady who had visited her therapist and she was told the, the way to achieve true inner peace was to finish the things that she started and not to sweat the things, you know, the, the small stuff. So she said, that, that sounds like good advice. I'll try it. So the next week when she came back to the therapist, she said, well, so far, I've already finished two bags of chips, uh, chocolate cake, and, uh, and I've polished off an entire jar of peanut butter. Oh, and by the way, I feel better already. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Stress on the inside. Another thing that can disconnect our lives from peace is conflict, which is loss of peace with others. Loss of peace with others. Did you hear about the young husband who was henpecked by his wife and so he decided to go to the counselor to, to get it off his chest and the, and the counselor told him, you don't have to let your wife bully you. Go home and show her you're the boss. So the young man got home. He slammed the door, shook his fist, and growled, from now on, you're taking orders from me. He went on to say, when I get home from work, I want my supper on the table. I want all my clothes laid out. I'm going to be going out with the boys, and you're going to stay home. And one more thing. Do you know who's going to tie my tie? His wife thought about it for a second and then said, Yes, dear, the undertaker. <laughs> you know, conflict can show up in just about every area of our lives. And if we're not careful on how we process conflict, we can easily lose our sense of peace. But the good news is that God already has the answer for sin, stress, and conflict. It is found in one of the names of God. In the Bible, God is called Jehovah Shalom, which means God of peace. Why don't you just take a moment right where you are and say the name Jehovah Shalom. Go ahead, say it. Right out loud, right in your home, speak the name of Jehovah Shalom because his name means God of peace. We already know and we have a pretty good idea what robbed the disciples of peace. Think about it. In one week they faced death, confusion, weird reports. Then a man slipping in and out of their lives like a ghost coming through the walls. We know why they had confusion. But the real question this morning is this. What's robbing you of your peace today? And how can you get it back? Maybe your peace was destroyed because of a violent event that took place in your life. Or maybe someone abused you as a child. Has your peace been taken away because of a recent auto accident that has really shaken you up to the point where you're afraid to drive again? Or maybe it's about this coronavirus and you have great fear not to even go outside. Fear is real, and we all know who the author of fear is. 
Perhaps you're wondering right now how in the world you're going to make your car payment or your mortgage payment or put food on the table. You see, it's easy to have peace when everything's going well in our lives. But when things go wrong, peace escapes our minds, hearts, and spirits. So how how can we battle these things that we do every day? How can we hear the voice of God saying, peace be unto you? So with your permission, I'd like to suggest three biblical strategies for securing peace. Did you write these down? Number one, to secure peace, we have to receive God's pardon. That's right. Receive God's pardon. Most of us know that we have sinned against God, but I have found over the years that many have difficulty receiving God's forgiveness and pardon. You see, Romans 5.1 says, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It is faith in God that gives us peace. It's like the bumper sticker that said, no peace, no God. No peace, no God. The difference is knowing God. And his peace comes when we invite Jesus into our hearts to make him the Lord of our lives. When you read God's word, have you ever noticed that the Apostle Paul always started his letters with grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ? Paul always placed grace first and then followed peace. Not once in his writings does he place the word peace and then grace. Friends, this is not accidental. The only way you'll ever have God's peace is to first accept his grace. Jesus wants to be the prince of peace in your heart. And the way you experience peace is by accepting his grace and his pardon for your sins. You can do that today. At the end of my message, I'll pray. And you can accept the pardon for sin. Now, another biblical strategy for securing peace is this. You need to trust God's purposes. Trust God's purposes. I know from firsthand experience that this is not always an easy thing to do. We live our lives in large blocks of time that seem to make no sense at all. Take this current pandemic that we're dealing with. Never in my lifetime Have I ever witnessed anything so severe, so intense? Let's face it, friends. Bad things do happen to good people. Life is not fair. And trusting God through our journey on earth is one of the hardest tasks that we'll have to do as human beings. Any preacher that tells you anything different than that is just flattering you and pulling your leg. And yet, amazingly, the Bible admonishes us to let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Rule in your hearts. Why? Because we are members of his body and we are called to peace. This verse begins with saying, let let God's peace Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. This this verse reminds me that, that peace really is a choice. Peace is an inside job. So when we're faced with With difficult seasons, we need to let God complete his work inside of us. So often we feel like, if I could only understand everything, everything that's going on around me, then I can sort things out. 
Well, let me, let me remind you today. There are a number of reasons that that thinking is faulty. And it does not produce any lasting peace. The first reason that's faulty thinking is this. God is not required to explain anything that he does. He's not. If he did, then there wouldn't be any faith involved. Faith is trusting God for those things that only he can bring about. He is God, we are not. And that means our role on earth is to accept his ways, to accept his plan without any explanation. That might be a hard thing to hear today, but that's the truth. Secondly, if God did explain it, you couldn't understand it anyway. For God to bring us up to speed on all that he's doing in the world, he would have to trace back to all the events of human history and how he brought it all together, much like a trillion piece jigsaw puzzle. And then we still wouldn't be able to comprehend the plans and purposes of God. The Bible says, who can know the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? I don't know why one lives and one dies. I'll never understand why one has to battle cancer and others don't or why some are infected with the coronavirus and others are, are not. None of these things make sense in the natural mind. But we must always remember that his ways are higher than man's ways. My role on earth is to trust his promises, and accept whatever plan he has for my life. Again, this is not easy, but it's the truth. Finally, when, if ever, is an explanation fully satisfactory? Think about this. I want to I illustrate this truth for just a moment. <laughs> when is ever... <laughs> Got to fix my mic here for a second. I teach a lot on the things that are true in the natural, also true in the spiritual. So I want you just to think about this, especially as it relates to our children. Children begin to do something between the ages of 2 and 12. They start saying this word, why? Why? Well, because, honey. Why? Well, that's, that's just the way that works. Why? Now, when they turn 13, then they know everything and they no longer ask why. That was just a little inside joke. And, of course, we do our very best to explain answers to them fully. And we try to say, okay, this is why. But let me ask you, has there ever been a time <laughs> when you could completely satisfy the curiosity of your child? Of course not. Explanations don't bring peace to the mind of the child, and we are all children of God. Friends, the only thing that brings peace of mind is to trust God completely with childlike faith which is why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. This is why we especially need to focus on the presence of God. You see, to secure peace, we must focus on the presence of God. Of God, Isaiah says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Whose mind is stayed on the presence of God. The choice is simple. We can either focus on God 
or focus on ourselves. Can I tell you? What you focus on determines your level of personal peace. Someone once said, if you look at the world, you're going to be impressed. If you look at yourselves, you're going to be depressed. But if you look at God, you're going to be at rest. Hallelujah. You see, keeping our minds focused on Christ is the key to peace, the solution, the RX for anxiety, worry, and stress is just to get your focus back on God. Psalms 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. You see, God is calling his church in the midst of this storm to be still and know that he is God. Did you know the Hebrew word for be still? It means to ease up or let go. <laughs> ease up or let go. Now we all know when we approach a curve on the highway and we're driving say 75 miles an hour, the best thing to do when you're going around a curve is to ease up on the gas pedal. Likewise, as we approach problems that we face in life, difficult situations, I believe God, I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to the church today, ease up, relax. I've got this. I've got this. Hallelujah. Let me share a personal story that happened to Sue and I 38 years ago. Back then, we were attending Trinity Bible College, and uh, we were dating and in love and still in love today. Thank God for Sue. But it was during that season when I was trying to figure out what should I do with my life? What church will I go to? Should I be a youth pastor? Should I be a, a lead pastor? Uh, when you begin out in ministry, it's very difficult because it's, it's like the kid on the baseball team lined up there saying, pick me, pick me. Also in, in Sue's and my relationship, I was trying to determine, you know, should we go forward? Should we pause a little bit? What should we do? When are we going to get this, engaged, and, and honestly, it just became a spiral of thoughts. And we would meet in the chapel, and we would talk and pray together. And on this particular night, I was just going on and on. My OCD was in full form, and I was just, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then Sue said these words, Ron, why don't you give your mind a rest? I had never even thought about that. What she was really saying was the Hebrew word for be still. It means to ease up, to let go and let God, to give him the situation. All my peace was gone. But when I gave my mind to rest and let God take control, then beautiful things begin to happen in our lives. And now almost 40 years later, we're married. And we've been married and it's just been the greatest journey of our lives. Friend, I want to encourage you. Relax a little bit. God is going to get us through this season. And as we draw this message to a close, let me share with you some exercises on how to become still with God. Exercise is good for us. I believe we should exercise, and especially spiritual exercises. I'm, I'm going to give them to you real quick. There are five of them. Number one, let God, not your imagination, Define your problem. Let God define the problem, not your imagination. That's another way of saying it. You see, the Bible says you already have the mind of Christ. 
So we learn that our identity comes because of this ongoing vital relationship with Jesus. We have to listen to what his word, what he says about us, and not what the world says about us. You see, we're in a real battle here. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians 10 says this, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments, which are thoughts, and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So we have to let God, not our imagination, define the problem. We have to pull down those thought bombs, those negative thoughts, and make them captive to the Word of God. That's an exercise we must do every day, every hour, every minute. Letting God define who we are. And letting God define what the problem is, not our imagination. Now, another exercise we can do is this. We can listen to God's voice. Do you want to be at peace right now? Then you're going to have to do this exercise. You're going to have to fill your ear gate with peaceful things. You cannot possess peace if all you do is listen to or watch junk on TV or digital devices. So instead of filling your mind and heart with the voices of the world, why don't you turn off those things and begin to turn on to the voice of God? I cannot think of a better time while we're in isolation that God would be allowed to speak to us. So fill your heart, fill your mind with the music and the words of heaven. Hallelujah. (laughs) What a great exercise that is. And number three, another exercise that we can practice is clear your mind of clutter. Clutter. To experience God's peace, you gotta gotta clean out the clutter. Clutter. I know for people like Alex and Jimmy and Tiger, this is difficult. But with God's help, they too can do it. (laughs) Years ago, a man found himself on a train between two ladies. He was in the middle, and they were sitting on his right and left. And these two ladies just kept arguing about whether the window should be open or shut. The lady furthest from the window argued that she would die of heat stroke if the window wasn't opened. The other said we would certainly catch pneumonia if it, if it didn't stay closed. So along came the, the ticket steward and the ladies begged him to come up with a solution for both of them. But he said, I don't have a solution. Finally, the man in the middle, he spoke up and said, first, let's open the window. That'll kill one of you. Then let's close the window. That'll kill the other. Then we'll all have peace and quiet. Friends, please hear me. All of us need to remove the stinking thinking from our minds. We need to replace those negative thoughts with God thoughts. His word says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if there is anything excellent or praiseworthy, think, think, think on those things. You see, you turn away your mind from all the fear and the anxiety that's going in the world. You declutter your mind and heart, and then you put your mind on things that are praiseworthy. As Christians, we need to close the windows of fear and anxiety and open the window of hope and faith. We're going to get through this season. 
And the way we do it is to clear out our minds of all ungodly clutter. Now, another spiritual exercise that we must practice is this. You must, LOL, laugh out loud until your attitude changes the situation. I know there's not a bunch, a lot of things we can laugh about right now. But could I encourage you to do something today and this week? Why don't you take a laugh vacation? Yeah, you heard me right. Take a laugh vacation. You know, life doesn't have to be so serious. It really doesn't. Why? Because God's already got this. He's already promised his peace. Going back to my story earlier, when, when, when Sue and I returned from Bartlett Lake, after encountering our rattlesnake cove experience, Sue and I just began to talk about it, and we began to laugh about it, and, and we became really silly about it. I mean, how really dumb can you be to hike in Rattlesnake Cove? But she then assured me and said, Honey, I would have sucked the venom out of your leg. <laughs> can I tell you, thinking back today and looking back, I would have taken a snake bite to have Sue suck on my leg. <laughs> oh, I don't know if that was funny or not. You know what the Bible says, friends? It says, a merry heart does good, like medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. A merry heart is like medicine. My fear during this pandemic is more people will die because of fear and anxiety than the coronavirus. You know, things will only get better if you change your attitude and you start looking at things in a different perspective. Crying and whining about what's going on in the country won't make it better. It's just going to dry up your bones. You need to allow some joy to come back into your life knowing that God is still in control. And finally, one of the best spiritual exercises I know is this. Number five, pray and ask for God's peace. Do you know that prayer is a great weapon against the enemy of fear, worry, and anxiety? The Apostle Paul, he knew this. He had a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of panic that hit his life. But he says to the Philippian church, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Oh, we all know that fear and anxiety steals our peace. But did you know that the word anxious means to choke or to distract? Think about that for a minute. To choke or distract. Anxiety is the opposite of peace. Anxiety wants to choke your breath off, just like this virus. But peace opened up the airways for God to remind you that he's in control. <laughs> Sad, but some people start worrying the minute they wake up. But the solution to worry and anxiety is quite simple. It's called prayer. Prayer. So let me leave you with seven, seven peace-producing words. Here they are. Be anxious about nothing. Pray about everything. Would you please join me in saying those words out loud? Let's, let's do it together right now. Be anxious about nothing. Pray about everything. Now this time I want you to do it with your fingers, okay? Here we go. There are seven words that will change your life. Let's start. Be anxious about 
nothing. Pray about everything. Hallelujah. Those are seven life-giving words to practice every day. So when fear and worry come in, remember to be anxious about nothing, but to pray about everything. You see, if you follow that one command, God will deposit within you a peace that transcends all human understanding into your troubled heart. As you begin to pray and lift your need to God, burdens will be lifted. As you begin to pray, fear and stress will be released out of your life. As you pray, God's peace will come. Allow me to close with his final story. And I know I've been closing a lot today. I apologize. You know, there was a large train and it was traveling in the night during a very violent storm. The lightning flashes were almost blinding to the passengers that were riding on this train. The rain was hitting the windows. Was, it was deafening and strong gusts of wind would rock the train back and forth as they went through the mountain pass. When the lightning flashed, it lighted up the darkness. The passengers could see rising water along the tracks. This created terror in the minds of the passengers. Several passengers noted, though, that through all the noise, all the lightning, all the wind, that there was one passenger, a little girl. She was sitting there in perfect peace. They couldn't figure out why the little girl was so calm and they were so excited. Finally, one of the passengers asked her, how is it you can be so calm and the rest of us are worried about what might happen? And this little passenger smiled and said, my father is the engineer. He's the one driving the train. Woo! Friends, I want you to know today, my father, Father God, Abba, Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah, Salom, he is the one driving the train. He's got everything under control. The lightning can come. The thunder can blast. Oh, the rain can pour out. The viruses can come. I'm not afraid. I'm on my way to heaven. God, my Father, is sovereign, and He's in control. And He's still walking into those situations today, saying, Peace, 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 peace be unto you. Those words meant everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to work out. Jesus was on board the whole time. And then he promised them, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, the comforter. And he's going to remind you of me. And he's going to bring peace no matter what you face, regardless of the storms you go against in this life. That peace will guard your mind and your heart. Dear hearts, may we allow those words to ring true in our lives today. Father, I pray, oh Jesus, as many have joined online, I pray, God, that you would remind us of the words of Jesus. Peace be still, peace be unto you. I give you this peace, not as the world gives. Oh, that the peace of God would protect our minds and hearts. Jesus, walk into that room right now. That place of torment, 
that storm and bring your peace. Jesus, I don't know what it is, but you do. Give care and love, grace and mercy. Those that are racked with sin and confusion and conflict, I pray you would bring peace into their hearts, into their lives right now. Friend, as your head is bowed and you've made that altar at home, that, that place of refuge, maybe today you, you've lost God's peace. And as I've ministered, <laughs> the Holy Spirit is igniting that peace again in your heart. And you say, Pastor Ron, I need God's peace today. Right where you're at, just, just reach out to God whether it be sin that has separated you, conflict or stress, whatever it is, just reach out to God today. Exercise your faith. Look up to the heavens. Jesus will walk in there right now. He'll take you by the hand spiritually, and he'll remind you of his beautiful presence. And maybe there are some of you that never prayed this prayer. Or you need to pray this again, so I want to pray with you. Today, you would like to surrender your heart to Jesus. Would you just say this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. God, I've made a mess of my life. Please forgive me. I repent. I need your peace. Would you be born again in my heart so that I can live for you? I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. You are alive. I declare with my lips, you are alive. Thank you, God for forgiving me and making me a child of God. Amen. And now may the God of all peace, all grace, all love, all mercy, all healing, may he touch you and make you whole. May he dispel every fear, every storm from your life as you hold the hand of the master. Lord Jesus, touch your family today. Touch them, God. Give them your peace. Perfect peace, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you so much for joining with us. It's great to be in your home. I really appreciate you allowing me to come in and talk to your heart. So and I continue to pray for you. We love you. We miss you. God's got this. We know he has the whole world in his hands. And together, we are going to overcome. So the Lord bless you and keep you until we gather again. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us for our online church service today. Uh, Danny and I just wanted to reiterate how much we miss seeing you guys, miss seeing you in church um, we know that during this season, it's difficult, but let's remember to stay connected with each other. Um, even if it's a simple phone call, a text, um, even a post on a, on a Facebook post or a comment or something like that, it can change someone's day. So we really want you guys to stay connected with each other and with us. So if you have any prayer requests, if you even just need someone to talk to, we are still open during our church office hours. So come and give us a visit. Yeah, and for those of you watching our services online via Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, if you just like and share our posts, that would be awesome so we can try and reach and just encourage as many people in our community as possible. Again, thank you for joining us from home. It's a difficult time, uh, but we love and miss you, and just God bless you. Have a great week.